All right, welcome back. And uh, as we continue, uh, as usual, we want to invite God's presence, so let us reverently kneel. Okay. Amen. All right, so in our first presentation, we went through the four kingdoms, showing how the Lord has brought us down through our time, showing that we need to understand now the fourth kingdom. And in Daniel chapter 7, it says, these four beasts are four kings. Amen. So the fourth beast is a king, right? And we know that the one, the, the one that comes up after the fourth beast, that always destroys the fourth beast, is what? The ten kings. And the Bible says, these um, are ten kings which rule, which they rule, but they have no kingdom as yet, and they rule one over the beast. So the ten kings really one, one kingdom or one king, right? So we, we need to understand then how the Lord removed kings and set up kings. As the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, he removed kings and set it up kings, right? This is what he was showing Daniel in Daniel chapter 2, yes? Yes. All right. So now let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 17 and we'll begin there because right there the Lord has his rules for how kings should operate. Right? And as we look at these rules, just think about every king, right? Not not king of the north, not king of the south, any king, right? Because the Bible is for all. Amen. Amen. All right. In Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 14, <coughs> the Bible says, "When thou art come into the, unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth, thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Then shalt thou in any wise set a king over thee, whom what? Whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee, that thou mayest set, that, sorry, thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. So this first rule, right? When you come into the what? Into the land. Which land? The glorious land. Amen? When did the God's people come into the glorious land? Literally. 1798. Bringing us to the time of the? Right? So right here. 1798. And the Bible says when you come into the land. Yes, son? Okay. All right. So it says, when you come into the United States, this is what he was telling his people, and you decide to pick a king, pick one of your brethren, right? And not a stranger. But who, who reserves the right to choose the king? Because he removeth kings and set it up kings. That's always going to be his right, right? If he gives that over to you, then you got. And you're going to remove him as king and set up another king, right? So he, he keeps that right to himself. So he says, when you come in the United States, if you decide to set up a king, did they decide to set up a king in the United States? No. Yes. Well, there was someone running the country, but, and then they became a president. 1798 is our beginning, right? Did they have a king in 1798? No. Yes, they had a president. They had a president, right? President, right. right. Who chose the president? I'll keep saying that. What does the Bible say? God, God right? How, does, how did God choose the president of the United States? The Constitution. He set up his law over this land. And this law governs the picking of a president, right? So the Lord chooses who is king in the United States, uh, how you become king in the United States. He says, pick one of your brethren. What must you be to be the president of the United States? Born in the land, not just a citizen. Mm -hmm. You must be born in the United States. Pick one of your brethren, right? No one from outside the United States could come into the United States and become president. Amen? God's law still stands, all right? 
Continue on verse 16. It says, But he, that king, shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return where? Back into this wilderness that they just came from. Right? To the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply what? Wives to himself. That his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. So the Lord is, the Lord is, 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 is he, set, he sets a bound. No strange wives, right? And when you take a wife, you enter into what? Into an agreement, into, an, into a league, so to speak. So he's saying, don't make no league. When this country is not supposed to make leagues, right? Because they are the head and not the, not the tail, right? The, the glorious land, the people of the glorious land was to be an example for the world. And the world was to be converted to the glorious land, right? So it says, no wives, right? No false doctrine, no fornication, right? But we know that all, the, the woman, right? She woos the whole world into fornication, and they drink of that wine, right? So the Lord set this protection that he gave is the constitution, right? The constitution prevents you from drinking that wine if you follow it the way it needs to go. So it says, verse, uh, verse 18, And it shall be when he sitteth upon the, upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a what? A copy of the book, uh, 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 sorry, a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priest and Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein, how long? All the days of his, which means the king is never to go away from the constitution. That he may learn the fear of the Lord, of his God, sorry, the, the fear of the Lord his God, to keep the words of the law, of this law, and these statutes to do them. That his heart be not what? Lifted up above his brethren. And that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. Which commandment is this tied to? Which, the fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy, that thy days may be. So the constitution then is our, is our father and our mother. It is to guide us, right? It is to lead us. In, in, into the truth. So, if, I'm, if the United States wants to prolong its days, then it will honor the Constitution, the father and the mother, right? But as we see right now, there is men who is unwilling to, to, to follow that. So, what does the Lord have to do? Visit the iniquities, right? So, when the Lord gave Israel this law, he knew that they were going to ask for a king. Right? And because he knew, he had mercy on them by giving them rules on how to set up a king. It's all mercy. Right? So now, we go to 1 Samuel 8, and Israel asked for a king. So let us, let us go through that. And just keep in mind, Israel is the United States. Amen? All right. It says... And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. This is the, 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 the elders of the land telling Samuel, you're old. Right? But the it says it was an excuse. Right? Samuel had never done nothing wrong, and he never showed himself to be weak. Right? So they made an excuse. In fact, she said they never told him what the sons did. Because they knew he would have corrected it. Right? So. No, he didn't. It says, now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So what are they trying to take on? Wives. Right? Immediately you can see that they, they're trying to take on wives. Right? It says, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people. In all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should reign not over them. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet do what? 
What did he tell Samuel to do? Protest. Protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Now, I'm about, I'm, in this presentation, I'm making the claim that in 2020, in 1798, Israel had a king, and that king was Christ. Right? And I'm not, I'm saying Trump represent that power. Right? This is, this is the point I'm making. And, and then the people of, of, of America, they dislike Donald Trump. They dislike the way he ruled. And so they call and they cry out for another king. And what did the Lord say? Give the people what they want. Right? But did Samuel protest? Did not Trump protest? What did he tell them? That these men are against what? Against the Constitution. Right? These men are going to do this, and they're going to do that. So, as I go through this story, you could see the principles of Samuel in Trump. But at the same time, Trump also bears the principles of the king of the land. Are we following? Right? So, I'm not saying that he's either one or the other. I'm just saying, look at the principles. Amen? Amen. So, um, now I'll go to verse... I just read verse 9. He says, protest. In fact, Samuel should also be us. Yeah. Right? We're the ones who should have seen these things and protest. Right? Mm -hmm. this, this, this is how it should be. Right? So, verse 10 says, And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that ask of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will what? He will take your sons. And appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. Some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. What is this? Captains over thousands, captains over fifties. It's the army, right? This, this, this. And, and you could take this and go back to when the United States became a nation. They needed a standing army. right? Once they became a nation, once they started to rank with the world, they now needed a standing army. It's the same principles. Right? So it says, um, And will set them to, to air his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of what? War. World War I. What happened? Man, they shut down every business. And what, what was every business doing? Ford motor cars. What were they making? That's why they have a nice, that's why they, they, they're so strong in the truck industry. They're the ones that made the trucks for the military. Right? They, they had enough practice. So, so this, this, this here shows the, 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 the overall progression of the United States. Right? You could see all these principles and they took place in the United States because the United States had a president. And as I'm understanding it, the Lord didn't want the United States to have a president. Because did he want Israel to have a king? No. Christ was supposed to be king. The rules were going to be the same, but it was always going to be Christ to be the king. Right? But in his mercy, though, he gave them these rules. Okay, if you pick a king, though, just make sure he live according to these rules. Right? Because these rules are, is, by the way, these same rules is how God operates. Uh, uh, right? So, continue on. Amen. Verse 13 says, And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And he will, what? Take your, 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 your fields, and verse 15, and he will what? Take the tenth of your seed and put them to work. Sorry. Tenth of your seed and of your vineyards, and give to his officers and to his servants. Verse 16, and he will what? Take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest men and your asses and put them to work. He will what? Take a tenth. And what? And you shall cry out in the day, in that day, because your king which you have, because of your king which ye shall have chosen, and the Lord will not what? Hear you. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, we, but we will have a king over us. Now, what, what is, from, what is the, 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 the theme with this king? That the people choose. And he's taking everything. 
right? He's, a, he's, an opp he's going to be an oppressor, right, is what the Lord is telling him. At some point, he's going to be an oppressor. However, does the Lord have captains of 50s and captains of, of, of 100? Okay. Does the Lord take your daughters to be his confectioners? Yes. Yes, he does. Amen. Does, does he take your fields and your vineyards? Does he take your young men and put them in the field to work? Does he take a tenth? Yes, right? If America didn't have a president, the only monies they would have lose was that tenth. But they have a president, so they'll lose another tenth. Taxes, they were only supposed to take a tenth according to the scripture. How much do they take now? 22%, right? They were pressing you, right? This is the whole point. The Lord was saying, look, I'm already taking a tenth because that tenth supports my work. If you choose another king, that king has his own work. Now you have to give him a tenth to do his work, and you have to give me a tenth to do my work. You're just making it worse for yourselves. So the Lord put these rules in place. He was really trying to protect his people. But in his mercy, he still said, you know what? Here's the constitution. Have your king, but I'm going to choose it. Amen? This is all his mercy. So the point I want, to, I want us to see very much is that the Lord is controlling what's happening now. He says, I will set up your king. Who is setting up President Biden? By whose rules is he setting him up? By the rules of heaven. Right? And we have to see that. Amen? All right. So now, verse 20. Um, all right, verse 22 says, And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto the voice and make them a, make them a king. And, and Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. So in 2020, people started complaining, right? Donald Trump is not handling the pandemic right. Donald Trump is a brute. Donald Trump is not presidential. Donald Trump is this, he's that, right? And they started crying out for a king, right? So what did, the, what did God say according to Samuel? Give the people what they want, right? How do the people in the United States begin the process of picking a king? By the election, right? So what's the next thing we should see in, in, in this story of 1 Samuel? An election. Amen. Are we following now? All right. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 16. This is the Lord talking to Samuel. He says, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt what? Anoint him to be captain over my people, Israel, that he may save my people out of the land of the Philistines, for I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw whom? Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, a man whom I speak of. Speak to, I speak to thee of. This same shall reign over my people. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servants pass on before us. And he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Then Samuel took a, a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath what? Anointed thee to be what? captain over his inheritance. Now this word captain in the Strongs means commander of civil and military. Right? It also means chief ruler. So Saul was made what? Commander in? He was chosen and he was anointed. What does it mean to anoint? Look in the notes. Bold part. To set apart. So the election only does what? Set apart. Sets apart the man that is chosen to be the king. Amen? So here Saul is anointed. Right? Was it, was, is, is, in some sense, the election is a public affair, but is it really a public affair? Nobody, nobody really knows who you vote for. Right? But when you finish, you know that that man was anointed. Right? So, so in some sense, you could see Samuel is having this private uh, choosing, right? It's not something that everybody knows, so to speak. So, 
What is the next step in our election process? After you get elected. Yeah. The certifying. The electoral college is just like the people, right? They're not doing anything different from the people, right? So now we have the certifying. And we know we saw it on January 6th. So the first part, let me just take this up. The first part is the election. The second part is the certif certification. C E R or I R? Right? So let's look in the Bible and see this certification. Right? Because Daniel says, Gabriel says, and now I will show thee what? The scripture of? Of truth. Right? This is the fourth kingdom. Amen? Amen. And the Lord is giving it to us from the scripture of? Truth. From the scripture of truth. So let us look now at 1 Samuel chapter 10. It says, and, and, and I would encourage you to go read the rest of this, um, these chapters. 1 Samuel 8, 9, 10, and 11. Because there, there's other details in there that would add to the overall um, story, overall understanding, which uh, for time I'm not going to try to dive into, into all of them. So 1 Samuel 10, verses 17, it says, And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord at Mizpah, And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, and out of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day what? The Lord is speaking to the American people, speaking to us. He says, In 2016, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, right? And I gave you the ruler. That was going to what? Work for you. Right? But he says, they rejected God. Right? They rejected the choice of God, which was Donald J. Trump. Who himself saved out of all the adversities, all your adversities, adversities and your tribulation. And he have said unto him, nay, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. By your what? Thousands. By your tribes. Right? Who, 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 who comes? When, 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 when the tribes come, who do they send? They send their representatives. Right? They don't come. The whole tribe will come. Otherwise, it's all Israel. It doesn't make a difference. Right? So, the tribes send their representatives. And it says, And when Samuel had caused all the tribes to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. And when he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near, by their families, the family of Matri was, Matri was taken. And Saul the son of Kish was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he hide himself among the stuff. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said unto all the people, See ye him whom the Lord hath chosen. So what is Saul now? He's confirmed. He's certified to be king. Yes? Head and shoulders above them all. Amen. Amen. Praise God, Senor. All right. So, yes? Um, just to go off of what Senor said, um, in heaven, Ellen White describes um, Satan, um, his, the main part of his rebellion starting with um, Christ being shown as who he was. Mm -hmm. And um, you could see that as a certification. And then, you know, there's a, a process that happens after that. And um, the same thing happened with, um, you know, when they were saying, okay, Biden is going to be elected in, and then, you know, you see the Trump people coming and protesting. So that's like a, another application. Uh, I'm not certain that you, 
that you see the certification in heaven in, in, in that story. But now as you went there, let me just lay out how I understand um, this, this war in heaven. Right. So in the beginning, because in Patriots and Prophets, she breaks on this whole thing and she says heaven, there was peace in heaven. Right. So if you go to this line, this would be the peace. Right. Amen. And then she says, all of a sudden, there was this discord. So something came into Satan's heart and he started wanting to exalt himself. Right. And she says, for a time, Christ and the angels went to him and tried to teach him what was true, right? And I'm saying that it's at this point where they go to teach him because we know the message arrived and then it's preached, right? And when you get to the end, the message is confirmed. Now, I'm saying this is the certification here, Quinton, in the election process, right? The confirmation that you're talking about, the way I understand it is when you get to this point, she says, God gathered all the angels in heaven, and he revealed Christ to them as who he was, the Son of God, right? This is his confirmation, right? This is the light that he wants to give you, the revelation of Christ, right? And we know we could bring in Lot and Abraham and show that right here at the sign is where they both will reveal the character of God, right? So right here you have this revelation of Christ in heaven. And then she says, Satan left this and went forth to do what? We know the story. So they scored, right? But did he openly do it? No, she said for a time there was no open rebellion, right? So it's a seeming time of peace, right? That's what Ellen White says. There seemed to be a little time of peace. And during this time, Satan is going forward and he is... He's, he's, he's so in discord, but claiming to uphold the Constitution, right? And I'm happy you bring that up because I, I think I need it for this. Then you came to a point, and she says, the time of final decision came. This is why I have final decision here, right? <clears throat> final decision, what, hap what happens at final decision? <coughs> if you make the wrong decision, what happens? Your probation is? Probation closes. And she says, right here, Satan decided he will not follow Christ. Right? That he was going to fight the kingdom from henceforth. And he closed his probation. Right? But then she says, the angels went forward. And this is a, they went forward and they tried to convince the other angels who were deceived. Right? And then she says, they, were, they told them that they don't see where it's tending. And where it was tending was to this destruction. Right? Now, the angels who was preaching that message, where did they get it from? At what point on the line would you, would you mark it? Uh, yes, true, because we do know what's coming at the end. But what do we get at the sign? The revelation of the end. It was at this point Lot knew that Sodom was going to be destroyed. So the angels, they went, they, they went back to the old path, right? And they taught that which they learned at the revelation of Christ, right? And then you come to the end here, and she says, and then there was war in heaven, right? Because at this point, Michael steps in, right? And so right here, you come, and we know it's just before the end because you have the special resurrection followed by the general resurrection, right? And so Michael stands up, and Satan is cast out. So this is how I would lay this, 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 this story. Right. So um, here, decision time, because in this history, she says that Satan convinced himself that he had gone too far. And then he went to convince the rest of the angels that they had gone too far. But some of the angels, what did they do? They repented. Right. And then they went back to follow Christ. And then to Christ, together with them, did what? Cast out Satan. So praise God. Now, keep that in mind because that, that is going to come up as I go along. It says, so we're at the point where Saul is certified. Samuel says, see ye him whom the Lord hath chosen. Right? There was no going back from that in some sense. Amen? 
Because the Lord says, who will choose the king? He, right? And, and, and by the constitution, Biden was chosen. Pence said what? I can't go against the constitution, constitution right? So, Patriots and Prophets 611, paragraph 1, says the anointing of Saul as king had not been made known to who? To the nation, right? Showing that this time is different from the anointing. The choice of God was to be publicly manifested by what? By bringing in the ballots. Right? They came in with the three boxes. Did, did you guys watch it? They came in with the three boxes and they went up there and Pence was sitting up there and they would get up and say, Mr. Speaker, we, whatever, we want to certify the votes from Pennsylvania, 13 of which is for Biden. And somebody would get up and say, I object or we accept. Right? It's, it's just great. Everybody was bringing their lot. You follow? Everybody was casting their lot in, right? And for a time, it didn't have, we know that a huge part of the nation didn't want to see the lots go to Biden, right? Well, that is in the Bible too. I never knew that, right? So it says, For this purpose, Samuel convoked the people at Mizpah. Prayer was offered. For, the guidance, for, for, for divine guidance, then followed the solemn ceremony of casting lot, the lot. In silence, the assembled multitude awaited the issue. While the people were in, while the people were in general ready to acknowledge Saul as their king, there was a what? A large party in opposition. Right? Exactly what we saw on the 6th. Right? But could that opposition have stopped the process? It just couldn't. When you, when you go back to that day, my question was, Lord, why did they just retreat? What, what allowed them to just stop? And the cops come, and they walk up peacefully. I was like, these people came for war. They had their helmets, they had, and, and, and the news was telling us they had guns, they had pipe bombs. They had. It's like, why did they just peacefully leave? Well, here it is. They had to peacefully leave because Biden was chosen. Amen? All right. So it says, for, the, for a monarch to be chosen from Benjamin, the smallest of all the tribes, and that to the neglect of both Judah and Ephraim, the largest and most powerful, was a slight which they could not brook. They refused to profess allegiance to what? To Saul, or to bring him customary presents. You know what is a customary present for the president-elect? Congratulations. All right? They refuse to acknowledge Biden as the president-elect. Those who had been most urgent in their demand for a king were the very ones that refused to, accept, refused to accept with gratitude the man of God's appointment. The members of each faction had their favorite, whom they wished to see placed upon the throne, and several others among the leaders had desired the honor for themselves. Dare we say Ted Cruz? Did he not run for president? Huh? Many of the people in there, they wanted to be president themselves. Right? And we know when everybody's striving for the mastery, what can't happen? Now you, can't have, you can't have order. You can't have union. Right? So it's really nice that we can come into the Bible and see this very process taking place before our eyes. And the Bible tells it to us word for word. And now I will show thee the scripture of Truth, what shall befall thy people in the latter days? Next quote. In this condition of affairs, Saul did not see fit to assume the royal dignity. Let me ask you a question. What was Biden saying through all the turmoil? Nothing. Right? He's basically saying nothing. But Saul did something similar. In the midst of all this, he went home. Right? It says, leaving Samuel to administer the government as formerly, he, retired, he returned to Gibeon. He, he, he was honorably escorted thither by a company who, seeing the divine choice in his selection, were determined to sustain him. But he made no attempt to maintain by force his right to the throne. In his home among the uplands of Benjamin, he quietly occupied himself in the duties of a what? leaving the establishment of his authority entirely to God. 
Let's look at the meaning of husbandman. Go down to the bowl part. What does it say? A master of a what? So Saul was a? Biden then is a? Let's look at the meaning of master. Bowl part. What does it say? A man who what? So Biden is a ruler then. Right? And what was he doing in the, t in the meantime while Samuel was continuing to rule the country? What is Biden doing? It says it right here. The duties of a? Husband man. The husband man is a ruler. Biden is ruling. Literally. He's doing his duty as a ruler. Currently. Everybody follow? Amen? Because in Daniel chapter 4, it says what? A mighty king shall and shall do according to his and shall rule with what? Biden is ruling. Right? Even without him being inaugurated. What does the Bible say? He's ruling, right? So there you have evidence that a mighty king stood up right there from the beginning. Amen? Yes, he was anointed and he was certified. But he still had not what yet? Ascended to the throne. Right? Everybody following? All right. With that said, what's the next thing to happen in our election? The inauguration. Everybody's on board. All right. First Samuel 11, verses 12 to 15, it says, And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Saul shall reign over us? Bring the men, that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day. And the reason why I'm highlighting that is because at that point, they still had division. What did Saul say? No division, guys. We're not killing anybody today. Right? Yes, son. All right. He said no division, right? Amen. And he says, Then said Samuel uh, to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal. What does Gilgal mean? Turning point. Right? All the people went to Gilgal and there made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. The meaning of inauguration, right? It means the act of inducting into office, investiture with office by what? How was Saul inducted into the throne? They sacrificed. They had the right uh, ceremonies, right? They had the appropriate ceremonies. There you have it. Saul is now inaugurated. Now he could go about ruling the kingdom. Amen? Now he's great. Right? He's, he's great. <laughs> so, let's just read this next bold part. It says, Samuel now proposed that a what? A what? What does that mean? No, it means everyone in the nation could come there. On the day of inauguration, what is that? Where do they have it? In the public square, right? They have it in the public square. Everyone could come to, to D.C. I mean, obviously, everyone can fit, but everyone could come to D.C. if they wanted to, to see this man set up. Well, when Christ comes, who's going to be there to see him set up? Everybody, right? So we can see this coronation of Biden, or this, this, this transition of power, which I, I don't know if Kuna might touch on it, is teaching the transition of power also in heaven. Amen? All right. So it says um, everyone came. Now drop down to page six. Seven. Top of page seven. Thank you. It says Christ's ascension to the heaven was the signal that his followers were to receive the promised blessing. Now, this is about us. What should we be doing in the time of the setting up of this, this king. Amen? Everybody follow? All right. It says, For this they were to wait before they entered upon their work. When Christ passed within the heavenly gates, he was enthroned amidst the adoration of angels. So when Christ left earth and went to heaven, 
What, what, did, what did she say he was? He was enthroned. Right? All right. Then she says, as soon as this ceremony was what? So from the beginning, Christ was king. Right? But what wasn't he yet? Inaugurated. Come on, guys. We're just going through it, right? Yes. He was not in... When Christ died and resurrected, did he, was he rightfully now the owner of the throne? Because he did all that his father said to do, right? And so when he, get, when he went to heaven, she says he went to the throne, right? And she says, as soon as this ceremony was completed, the Holy Spirit, what? Descended upon the disciples in rich currents, and Christ was glorified, even with the glory which he had with the Father from all eternity. The Pentecostal outpouring was heaven's communication that what? That the Redeemer's inauguration was completed. Oh, sorry, accomplished. So the revelation that we receive here is based on what? What is he teaching? Biden is going to be inaugurated. The Lord is going to give us great light. And we have to see it and we have to prepare for it. But what was the disciples doing in the upper room for 10 days? What else? Confessing, forsaking, right? This revelation does not come if you're not doing this work. So while we're seeing this transition taking place, what should we be doing? Praying, confessing, right? Forsaking our sin. Or we would not get this revelation. What was Lot during this time? Eating with the angels, right? Re putting away unleavened bread. Leavened bread, sorry. He was eating unleavened bread, right? So, continuing on. Next quote. Uh, this one is about Abraham. He says, Abraham had seen his guests in the three uh, tired wayfarers, little thinking that among them was one whom he might worship without sin. But the true character of the heavenly messengers was now revealed. Though they were on their way to be what? On their way as what? So they were on their way to Sodom, right? It says, yet to Abraham, the man of faith, they first spoke of his, they, sorry, they spoke first of blessings. Though God is strict to mark iniquity and punish transgression, he takes no delight in vengeance. The work of destruction is a strange work. To him who is infinite in love. And I didn't put it in here, but the next quote talks about which says, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I'm about to do? Right here, Abraham received this revelation. Right? And when you go to Lot, just read the bold part. She says, The events that followed revealed the character of the, the, of the guests he had entertained. They smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Had they not been visited with what? Double blindness, being given up to the hardness of heart, the stroke of God upon them would have caused them to fear and to desist from their evil work. So if they didn't get this double blindness, what would they have received? What is the stroke of God? Destruction. Right? Yes? Continue on the same quote. She said, The last night was marked by no greater sins than many others before it, but mercy so long slighted had at last ceased its pleading. The inhabitants of Sodom had passed the limits of forbearance, the hidden boundary between God's patience and his wrath. The, fa the fires of his vengeance were about to be kindled in the veil of Sidim. So right here, right here, you have this, this fire. But before the Lord could bring it, he's going to what? Reveal it. Satan in heaven. He was given opportunity to do what? To repent. To go about, uh, as a matter of fact, she, she didn't say repent. She says he was given opportunity to develop his principles. So what is our president going to be given at this point? An opportunity to show his true colors, to develop his principles. Right? But we know according to the Bible, that great horn is broken. But not to his posterity. So, you know, we, we could follow that on. So, 
let's just look at this last section and we'll close. Um, this revelation that comes here is great. It's going to be great. But the Bible says, if you if you not, um, how does the other one say? He can't give it to you because you will make right use of it. If you receive it here, praise God, the Lord has confidence that you'll make right use of it. Amen? But let's see how he's going to allow you to move forward with that revelation. It's important for us to understand that, right? Remember, this is a seeming time off, but is it really peaceful? Nah. Next, next text, 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. It says, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the what? Revelations. There was given me a, a thorn in the flesh. Whom? The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above. So right here, Satan is allowed to do what? To develop his principles. Right? And it's going to be a thorn in your flesh. We, we, we have to see, when we get to this point, it's going to be glorious. The revelation is glorious. Amen? It's freedom. Right? It's reparation. Right? But what follows? Not, not yet. It's a little time of peace, but even in here, he's a thorn in the flesh, and he's a bigger thorn in your flesh at the end here. Right? So what I want us to see is, we get to this point, we have to be ready also for what's coming in a little time of peace. And we have to see that it's not over because the Bible says, He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It, the, the, you have to get to the end there. Okay? Continue now. <clears throat> for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is what? Sufficient for thee. My, for my strength is made perfect in Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I what? Glory in mine. This is where we come in. Right? This is our response. We glory even when we are pressed down by Satan. All right? Um, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then he is strong praise god for that promise he uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise amen we just have to stay faithful amen all right in first peter peter says this submit yourself to every ordinance of man for who for the lord's sake whether it be a king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the what Punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do. So what is Biden's purpose? Based on this verse, what is the Lord sending him? To punish whom? Evildoers, but a praise for whom? It's a time of peace for God's people, right? We, sh we, we, we have to see these things and know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. The Lord is really trying to put us on a sure foundation. Right? When we get this revelation, re this revelation is going to also be, a, be um, it's going to also be associ associated with it is also going to be literal riches. Literal goods that the Lord will provide so that you can do His bidding and His will. Amen? Alright. So, stimulus checks. It's in the Bible. All right, they're not doing anything that God didn't say they was going to do. Amen? However, I want us to understand that we must pray for our nation. We do have to, right? Because when Cyrus was wrestling, what was Daniel doing? Praying for the nation. When Daniel prayed three times a day during that law, by principle, he was praying for Darius. Because what was Darius' response at the end? Man, he couldn't sleep. Right? And at the end, he, man, he was happy to go and, 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 and get Daniel. Right? Because he prayed for his nation. So we have to know also how to pray for our nation. Because only those that sigh and cry receives 
the revelation. Amen? All right. Peter says, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye might put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty as a what? Cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only the good and gentle, but also the... Take this word forward and go to Proverbs and use it many times with wicked men. Every time, majority of times you use the word forward, it's about wicked men, right? This, amen, because who's the master? The husband, right? So it says, For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endure what? Grief, suffering how? Wrongfully. For what glory is it, if when ye are buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer it, ye take it patiently, this is what? Present yourselves a living for this is that good and acceptable will of God. Once you get that revelation, the Lord is calling you to be a sacrifice. As soon as the Lord gives us light on what's to come, you have to go and teach it. You become, you're going to become that sacrifice because persecution comes with it. Amen? All right. Romans 13, Paul says it a little differently. Let every soul be subject to the, unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. And we, that's what God did when he set up a king, right? He says, I will set up the king, right? The powers that be are what? Ordained of, of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of, of God. So we have to be careful and watch and see the laws that Biden put out. And we have to be able to know when it goes against God, or when it's something that we need to follow, right? And we did have, have an experience of that when the mask mandate, no, the, the gathering, when they said only no more than 10 people, we had to weigh that. And we had to decide whether we was going to obey that or whether we was going to gather for church, right? It's, it's the same thing. So there, there is things that, 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 that Biden is going to put on the table and we have to obey it, right? So keep those things in mind, right? But we know, when you, when you parallel this with the civil Sunday law, do they make a law there? Yes. Saying what? Don't work on Sunday. Work on Sunday. Well, what does Ellen White say to do about that? And she says obey. Right? So there you go. This is, this is where she's getting it from. Right? Obey the rulers. Right? Then it says, For rulers are not terror to good works, but to what? Evil. Evil. Wilt thou, not, wilt thou then be, not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have what? Amen. Praise of the same. Daniel, Joseph, right? Amen, Amen. right? They, all, they were lifted up in these heathen nations because they did good. For he is the minister of God to, to what? To thee for what? Man, something about setting up Biden is good for us. We just have to walk according to God's will, right? This, it's, it's, I mean, I know my words is not enough to make it as important as it needs to be, but it's very important that we see this whole process with God's hand underneath the wheel. It's very important, and it's very important that we understand our place in this thing because we're going to come up here and we, we, we're either be blinded or we get plugged back in to the door and given a revelation. Do you follow? All right. The last text, Psalms 58, verse 9. I just want to take this one thought here. It says, Before your parts can feel the thorns, which is really what Satan wants to do, is to destroy you, right? It says, Before your parts can feel the thorns, he shall take them away with a what? With a whirlwind. Both what? Living and in his? The seventh plate. Right? So the Lord has given us much evidence 
as to what's taking place um, around us, showing us that Biden is going to be inaugurated on the 20th, and the Lord is going to give him space to show his character. Because the Lord can't punish unless he gives a warning, right? And so God is going to send a people to warn him. And when he does, well, we know the Bible says, I mean, I don't want to condemn the man, but the Bible does say that horn is broken, right? So we'll just leave that there. That horn is broken and it goes to his posterity. We know that Alex, sorry, does not go to his posterity. We know in the history, Alexander, he died. Amen? And whatever that death is representing here in our time is going to happen, right? And when it happens, we have to be right there ready to receive the revelation because every time prophecy is fulfilled there's also a new revelation because you have to walk in the light while you while you have the light and this is why the lord reveals these things in stages for us as we would make right use of it so i trust that we do have a better understanding of what is taking place around us and that we recognize our role our role our what we should be doing in that time right because it's parallel to the 10 days in the upper room, right? These, these, these men were, 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 were praying, repenting, calling back up the words of Christ, right? And, and praying for understanding uh, of these things. And Ellen White says, unless we are daily advancing in the exemplification of the active Christian virtues, the latter rain will be falling all around us and we would not receive it, okay? So I trust that we will leave here with a better understanding. And we... We'll come back here in the morning at 10 o'clock where we'll continue to um, continue with these presentations. Um, I know that God has given light to my brethren and they are ready to present and to do the Lord's work. So for those online, we thank you for being with us and we'll meet back here at 10 tomorrow morning where we'll have another few presentations on the things that the Lord is opening up for us. Shall we kneel for prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the Holy Sabbath day, Lord, that you've set aside for us whereby we can come together, Lord, and, 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 and break bread one with another, more so, Lord, communi to commune with you, Lord, without the tro troubles and trials of the week. Lord, uh, it is a holy convocation, and we pray that you'll forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that we may be presented holy and without fault before you as well. Lord, not because of anything we've done, but because of the merits of Christ, who is before you making intercession for us. And so we thank you for uh, the light that you are pouring out on the, on the pages of Scripture. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will strengthen us to live up 